Hello and welcome back to, at long last, another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash, and in today's video I've got something really rather exciting for Bitwig users that also have Ableton 12. We're going to be diving into how we can use the powerful new generative features in Ableton's piano roll, and then seamlessly sending that MIDI from Ableton to Bitwig in real time. By doing this, we're able to take full advantage of Ableton's brilliant new update, whilst of course still harnessing Bitwig's incredible sound design capabilities that we all know and love on this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. The first thing we're going to want to do is press command spacebar to bring up the spotlight search. We're going to put in audio MIDI setup. Once that's open, we're going to go to the window option up here and open MIDI Studio. When this is open, you'll see every single MIDI device you've ever connected to your computer, and it may or may not be something a little like this. Uh, I'm sure it's a feature and not a bug to show you everything on top of each other, but we're going to want to find a red square called IAC Driver. I'm going to drag that out over here, and as I double-click it, it's going to bring up this pop-up menu, and we want to find this checkbox, Devices Online, and turn it on. Cool, we can now close out of MIDI Studio and Audio MIDI Setup, and let's go first to Ableton. Let's whip up the settings here, and we're going to want to go down to the Input and Output ports under the Link, Tempo, and MIDI section, and make sure to enable Track On for the Output ports. We could also enable Track On for the Input ports, but for now that's not necessary. One final thing we need to do to get this set up is under Still, Link, Tempo, and MIDI, we're going to want to Show Link Toggle, that's going to show it up here. It's going to enable us to synchronize the playback between Ableton and Bitwig. We're also going to want to enable Start, Stop, Sync. And when enabling that in both software, it means that when we press Play or Stop in either Bitwig or Ableton, the other one will follow suit. OK, so that's everything we need set up in Ableton. Now let's head over to Bitwig. In the settings here, we're going to go to Controllers, Add a Controller, Generic, Controller, Add, and we're going to choose IAC Driver. One thing that I think helps with housekeeping is if you do have a variety of MIDI devices or controllers set up, uh, while Ableton does actually give it its corresponding name of IAC Driver, Bitwig will call it Generic Controller. So you can just double click on this and say IAC Driver, and that will help in the long lists that you may have to actually find the specific one. Finally, we want to go to Synchronization, and under Sync Method for In, we're going to choose Ableton Link, and of course, use Ableton Link Start and Stop Synchronization. Got a bit of a mosquito on the back of my neck, I think. Okay, now, let's head back over to Ableton, and I want to set up three MIDI channels that are going to be sending MIDI from Ableton to Bitwig. The first thing I'm going to do is choose the MIDI 2, to be IAC driver bus 1. And by default, this is set to channel 1, that's fine. I just want to duplicate this twice, and I'm going to change on the second one for channel 1 to channel 2, and finally to channel 3. That's everything we need to do in Ableton. Let's head back over to Bitwig. I'm going to delete this audio channel. I'm going to do exactly the same thing in reverse as what I did in Ableton. So this is going to be choosing an input under all ins to be IAC driver, and I want the channel of this to be channel in 1. I can then duplicate this down, choose the second one to be channel 2, duplicate it down, and this is channel 3. The other thing that we might want to do is to enable by clicking this little grey headphone icon until it's illuminated in yellow, this is going to be monitoring the MIDI, which means that we don't actually need to record enable to hear anything. Now I want to load up on this first channel a drum machine, and I'm going to put a little kick in here, let's just pick something, might have to put my headphones on now. Okay, I'm going to load up a kick, then I'm also going to load up on D1 some sort of tom sound. Let's pick an 808 tom, and let's find some sort of hat, and then let's find one more hat for F sharp one. Okay, we'll take that. Okay, under the second one, I want to add a polymer, and on the third, I want to add a polysynth. Fantastic. Let's enable Link in Bitwig and head back on over to Ableton, making sure to enable Link here. And let's create our first MIDI clip. So for channel one, because we've got a drum machine loaded, I'm just going to create an empty clip. And if you don't already have it open, I'm going to go here to the Generative Palette of Tools, and I'm going to find Rhythm. We can see that Pitch C1, that's actually the same note that we have our kick on here. So all I have to do is just click this, and it's going to give us some notes. 
Let's try it out and see if it works, bearing in mind there are no instruments on anything in Ableton, just a MIDI clip. Let's press play and check that out. We've got the sound now coming through in Bitwig, although the MIDI is being sent from Ableton. I'm gonna change the tempo to 120 for good measure. And what else have we got? Okay, we've got a Tom on D1. So let's go in here and I'm going to now click elsewhere so I'm not editing this anymore and I'm going to go up one. And I'm now going to say, well, I'd like 16th notes for my toms or a 16th note subdivision, but I probably want a little less density. So I can pick how many steps I want in here. I can change the pattern. So let's try something like this out. Choose a different pattern. Quite cool. Okay, now let's go for a hi-hat, which of course was E. You can pick the fact that the the ratio of low velocities here to high velocities. I actually want a few more notes. Oh, that's really cool. And then let's add in our other note, which is on F1. So let's click, go up one. We can choose how often we get a, a, a large velocity or a higher velocity. I can do three. quite liked what we had though. Okay, that'll do for now. I'm also just gonna quickly adjust the tom sound in here because it's a little bit lame. That'll do. Okay, so under our second clip now, I wanna create some sort of arpeggiated sound that we're gonna be using on this here polymer. So I'm gonna make sure to uh, bring just this to be a slightly pluckier envelope and let's head back into Ableton. Currently, Ableton is set to C major, which is actually okay for now, I don't really mind. I'm gonna pick, instead of rhythm now, Seed. Now Seed is a really cool, uh, fairly wild algorithm that allows us to just generate a bunch of notes. It doesn't always sound great, but we do have some tools here, such as duration uh, dynamic, pitch dynamic, and velocity dynamic to help shape this into something a little bit more usable. So let's see what it sounds like straight off the bat. Not great, so why don't we say, okay, well, I don't really want that many uh, high notes. So I can actually say, well, let's make it so that the highest note is actually just a C4. There we have a ratio or a, uh, notes from C3 to C4. I've actually got to make sure that I highlight all of them because otherwise it's going to generate on top of it. Now we have C3 to C4. I can choose that, in fact, the shortest note I'd like to have is just a 16th note. Maybe I want to have some lower velocity notes, which is going to come in quite handy when we start mapping things in Bitwig. I also have the option for voices. Maybe I want only one note at a time. With less voices, we can increase the density. Quite nice. And of course, if we want an entirely new pattern, we can just click this to regenerate. I quite like having maybe two or three voices at times. And if we like a section, but we don't like another part, maybe we don't like this, you can just highlight the notes and then just generate again for that bit. You can make it more dense with more voices with a higher ratio of notes, which can be really cool. And of course we could duplicate this and then adjust just these notes. Quite nice. Now under this one, I want to make a nice little plucky uh, si surf, saw wave sound. And I'm gonna use for this third, let's call this uh, arp and drums. On this third MIDI clip, I'm gonna use the shape algorithm. This one's really cool because you can effectively pick the shape of the notes without having to actually get too nitty gritty about the notes. It's basically just like painting a line. So if I just do a little squiggle here, you'll see that this collection of notes is reflected on the scale that we're in. So if I were to just press play now, this is now sending that through and whatever I adjust to it, and of course this is just pure 16th notes. If we wanted to actually uh, change the fact that sometimes we have 16th notes, sometimes we have 8th notes, we have the option to tie them. And it ties them in a rather interesting fashion at times. So let's see what this sounds like. 
quite cool. Also, I'd probably like to bring the notes down a bit. So let's make it so that the lowest note is a C1, and we'll go to C... C2, maybe, just to keep that range nice and tight. Maybe we'll even go to, say, G2. And uh, this is going to give us a bit more of a bassy sound. I'm also going to make sure the polysynth is in mono. Let's listen in context. Probably want to bring this down. Go back and give us a new generation. We can do jitter just to adjust a bit, make it a bit weirder. Add a bit more tie. And for the hell of it, why don't we add one more little section here where I'm going to duplicate this channel down and I'm going to change the channel to channel 4. And let's make one more in here. It's as easy as just adding one to the number. I'm now going to go back to polysynth and let's just pick, say, the organ now. No, let's not. Let's use polymer. But we're going to make it so that it's a sawtooth. And we're going to get rid of the envelope for now. And maybe we'll make it a little bit out of sync. Maybe we'll even increase the voice stacking. And I'm going to Add the voice spread, we'll do minus one to one and just do a little bit more pitch change. And maybe we'll also pan it a bit crazier. So let's see what this sounds like if we were to now try and add some chords using the stacks algorithm. So by default, if I were to just click this, it's going to add a C major for us. And we can see that this first chord is that. And as we start to increase these up, we can increase the complexity. This is now a C major 7. And I can adjust the inversions. And I can also adjust the root. So it's just going to skip us down through the, the different possible chords. So let's just press play. I can duplicate. And let's change this to, say, an A. We'll do an inversion. Oh, actually didn't mean to do the entire length. Um, notice how easy it actually is when you just highlight the notes that you like and the ones that you don't. Nice. When it comes to drums, a lot of the time I would still program them in Bitwig because I do actually really like just using the MIDI clips and, you know, putting things in here and then using our recurrence and occurrence. But I think you can see the possibilities um, for using this to create melodic sequences to be really quite cool. I'm just going to completely regenerate this and, of course, we could open up down here, not just velocity, but chance. So we could say, okay, well, give me, uh, say, a 70% chance that any of these notes even play. Or we could easily just click randomize, and that's going to give us a different random amount of chance per note. I'm actually going to mute these drums because they're irritating me a bit. Let's just keep the kick in. And if we click up here on any of the velocity, it's going to change it up here. And we've got the option to do deviation, which means that on any of the notes highlighted, it's not just that it will be a randomized velocity decided by this, but there will be a deviation, a possibility for those notes to stem a certain amount vertically, or should we say increasingly, above the uh, velocity set. And just because we've used these generative tools doesn't mean that we can't then go in and make adjustments. And of course, if I click up here, highlight scale, I can see the notes or I can click scale here and I only have access to the notes that are correct, which means that I could bring this in and I could say maybe I want this note up here and maybe I want that down there. And everything is going to be snapped in the scale, which is a feature that we've been saying as a bit with community for quite a while would be perhaps relished quite, quite, uh, quite aggressively if they were to be added into a new update. But I really do appreciate the fusion of being able to use these generative and transformative tools in combination with just our good old-fashioned noggin to say, oh, well, actually, I'd like to hear that.
The final thing I want to say before I leave this, because I don't want this video to get too long, is that everything that we're doing is just being triggered real time because we've set this input monitoring. But I do want to draw your attention to the fact that if I enable the MIDI record in here, if we get fed up of using this Ableton thing and we really do want to just transition our project file fully over to Bitwig, all we have to do is just click record and you'll see that all of that MIDI that is being generated in Ableton is just easily being transitioned across, including if we were to make any changes to it in real time. So let's go back over here and I'm going to increase the possibility. Really nice. You can see that all of those notes have then been actually baked into our Bitwig clip. One other cool new thing that I think I'd love to make a brief video on if you found this at all interesting is using Logic's new AI session musicians, which is a pretty lame feature in Logic. I did just purchase Logic specific to play around with it, but I had a lot of fun actually using it in combination with Ableton and sending all of that shit into Bitwig to trigger instruments. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested to see more uses of sending MIDI throughout the different DAWs and harnessing the powers of all of them. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video was useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell too if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. In the meantime, happy Monday and happy creating.